You just saw and heard a Jewish religious leader blowing the shofar, a ram's horn. That special sound is to announce the beginning of the Jewish New Year. The New Year holiday is called Rosh Hashanah. It means head of the year. When do you celebrate New Year? Well, instead of counting down to midnight in January, like many other New Year celebrations, Rosh Hashanah occurs in the fall, in either September or October, when the leaves begin to change color and ooh, there's a chill in the air. Stay tuned as we discover the traditions and meaning behind Rosh Hashanah and how people around the world celebrate this important holiday. Today, we're talking about a holiday that is part of the Jewish High Holy Days that happen every fall. It's the Jewish New Year called Rosh Hashanah. The High Holy Days are a very important time for Jewish people all around the world. It begins with Rosh Hashanah, lasts for 10 days, and ends with the observance of Yom Kippur, which we'll be talking about in our next video. During this time, people take a good look at their behavior from the past year and think about how they can be kinder and make better choices in the new year. It's a time to start fresh and make plans to be a better person. Many of you probably celebrate New Year in January, but many different cultures around the world have their own dates and traditions for a New Year celebration. For example, the Chinese New Year often falls in late January or early February. The Hindu religion celebrates Diwali as part of their New Year festivities in October or November. The Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, comes in the fall because the timing is based on the ancient Hebrew calendar. Let's discover the meaning behind Rosh Hashanah and why it's celebrated. It is based on a story from Genesis in the Bible about creation and Adam and Eve. The Torah, which consists of the first five books of the Bible, says that Adam and Eve were the very first humans. They were in a brand new world and their choices impacted the future for all people. This holiday encourages people to think about their own behaviors and make choices that help make for a better world, just like Adam and Eve's choices shaped their story and their world. Besides blowing the shofar that we heard at the beginning of the video, Rosh Hashanah has some other really cool traditions. Remember in the video about Shabbat, we learned that people say prayers for lighting candles? People light candles during Rosh Hashanah too, but instead of the prayer being about Shabbat, this prayer thanks God for new experiences and the gift of life. Another tradition is called Tashlich, when families throw breadcrumbs into flowing water. The breadcrumbs represent the mistakes they've made during the year and the water washes them away, letting people begin anew. Like all Jewish holidays, Rosh Hashanah begins when the sun sets. Family and friends gather at the dinner table for a delicious meal. Now, let's take a look at some of the items on the Rosh Hashanah dinner table. You probably recall that in the Shabbat video, we saw the braided bread called challah. There is challah here too, but it is usually in a round or oval shape like a crown or round like a wreath. The round shape is a symbol of the circle of life. A symbol is a picture or object that stands for something else. So the round chala symbolizes the year's ending and a new year with a chance to grow and be happy. Also on the table are sliced apples and honey, which symbolize a sweet new year. People dip the apple into the honey and say Shana Tova, which means 
Sweet New Year in Hebrew. And you can see there it is written in Hebrew. What are some foods your family eats that make you happy or remind you of a happy occasion? Like with a Shabbat meal, there is also a blessing over the wine. Sometimes at the meal, people eat a fruit called a pomegranate. Have you ever had a pomegranate? It's said that the fruit has 613 seeds, which goes along with the 613 commandments in the Torah, the Jewish holy book. Regardless of exactly how many seeds it actually has, eating the fruit symbolizes the wish for a year filled with as many good things as the fruit has seeds. Rosh Hashanah services at the synagogue are an important part of the holiday celebration. People get together to pray and think about the last year and how they can make better decisions. The rabbi blows the shofar. It is said that the sound, remember the sound we heard at the very beginning of this video, can reach all the way to God's ears. And it's time for God to open the Book of Life. The Book of Life isn't a real book. According to Jewish tradition, it's kind of like a diary where God writes down who has been good and who will have a great year. Imagine if you had a book that recorded all the good things you did in a year. What are some acts of kindness you would want written in the book? The 10 days after Rosh Hashanah are known as the Days of Awe. These holy days are a time when people look at the past year, admit their mistakes, and try to make things better. They apologize to people they may have hurt and accept apologies from others who have hurt them. They also ask God to forgive their mistakes. Rosh Hashanah ends at sunset, two days after it begins, but the days of awe continue. And on the final day, people observe Yom Kippur, the holiest of all Jewish holidays. We'll be talking about Yom Kippur in our next video. So. That's Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, a holiday filled with sounds, symbols, and sweet traditions. Check out the PDF that goes with this lesson for more information and fun activities that go along with the video. Thanks for joining me today, and in the meantime, remember to always be clever. Hey, hey.